Hello. Today, um, you know, it's uh, the uh, 400th episode of this uh, series I've, you know, dedicated to just talking about movies and uh, things of a sort. Uh, <clears throat> and so, uh, sort of thinking, you know, I've talked about my favorite movies and some, like favorite directors and such before for like the past, like every time there's like a hundredth, uh, like every a hundred episodes, I seem to do that. And, um, I thought, uh, why not talk about my favorite actors, like my top 10, uh, maybe for either 500 or 600. I don't know. Uh, maybe I want to do something a little different for 500th, uh, episode. I don't know what, but you know, that's some ways off now, but I think, you know, uh, uh, doing something like this right now would be pretty cool. Um, I have movies here to sort of like, uh, uh, in a sort of order of 10 to 1, my favorite actors. Um, and I have a list of people, you know, from 10 to 1, um, but I also have a uh, list of people who, like, honorable mentions, people who didn't make the top 10, but whom I like quite a bit. Um, James Earl Jones, Lon Chaney Sr. and Lon Chaney Jr., Matt Damon, Russell Crowe, Johnny Depp, Marlon Brando, Morgan Freeman, Denzel Washington, Robert Duvall, Dennis Hopper, Matthew Lillard, Heath Ledger, Clint Eastwood, Robin Williams, John Hurt, Tom Hardy, Jack Nicholson, uh, and a slew of other people. Um, Harrison Ford is also another one. Uh, Mark Hamill. I know people don't totally think much about Mark Hamill aside from Star Wars, but, uh, you know, and also perhaps his voice work for, like, you know, uh, the Joker on the various Batman cartoons and video games. But uh, he did a pretty... Uh, various other films and stuff. Like uh, The Big Red One is a good film that he did. Um, he also uh, did a lot of uh, Broadway stuff, uh, played Mozart in Amadeus, uh, but he was rejected from uh, continuing to audition to play Mozart for the 1984 film due to the fact that uh, he was Luke Skywalker. And so uh, apparently nobody could ever be able to <clears throat> put aside his previous portrayal of Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars trilogy and maybe be able to see him beyond that and if he was able to prove himself uh, that he was a really good uh, Mozart. Um, he got a lot of great reviews from uh, critics when he was on Broadway. And I think he later played Mozart uh, in California also, but yeah, because of uh, him being Luke Skywalker, you know, he wasn't able to uh, uh, audition more than probably like I think a couple times. So that kind of stinks. Um, Liam Neeson also is an actor I really enjoy. Uh, you know, all these people have done excellent work, excellent films and stuff, so... I just wanted to mention some people whom I really enjoyed uh, watching, seeing the variety of films they've done. And, uh, you know, they uh, didn't t make it to the top ten, but all of them were really good. I know some might think Matthew Lillard is way over the top in a lot of the things he does, and that is quite true for various the, the various parts he is very well known for. But oftentimes that's also really uh, kind of the point, really. Like in Scream, he was kind of supposed to be over the top. Um, he doesn't really get to be the lead much. Um, SLC Punk is a film where he was the lead that you know, really showcased his talent, um, you know, as a leading man, but unfortunately he didn't really get to do too many, uh, uh, films, uh, being the leading man, but, you know, he seems to be all right with it, you know, and he's also, it's the voice Shaggy, so that's just something he's very well known for also. 
sort of like Mark Hamill in that. You know, people generally think of him as one character, but he's done a few other stuff or a few other things. Uh, and sort of like for genre, if you're a horror fan, and if you've seen Scream, you might think of Matthew Lillard in that film. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I guess we should probably uh, get going for this uh, top 10. I, and I have it to where I'm going to showcase like the, I don't know, maybe like their best performances or my favorite films uh, that they've done uh, to an extent. Um, you know, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, uh, basically, uh, I just have, uh, <clears throat> that the films that I think that, uh, has their best work, um, they may not necessarily be my favorite films they've done. Sometimes it might it might be, um, but I have my reasons for such uh, choices, and uh, I'll probably get into some of those. Some might be obvious, some might not be, but uh, regardless, I think for some it might be good to sort of <laughs> explain why my uh, choice in film or performance, I guess, would be better. Uh, for a certain actor. Like, why do I prefer that over some other well-known film they've done? And hopefully I'll be able to uh, present the reasons why uh, I like <laughs> certain performances from certain guys over some of the other films they've done uh, and performances they've given. So, <clears throat> first would be... Uh, Anthony Hopkins, and uh, to me, his best performance is in The Silence of the Lambs. I'm sure that's probably very, you know, generic to think, but really, he did uh, give an amazing performance in this, you know, a very intense and frightening. Interesting how he's pretty much calm the whole time. It's just the demeanor he has is very intense and very intrusive at various points. Uh, to Jody Foster's uh, uh, Clary Starling. Um, really a mate, uh, phenom phenomenal performance. Uh, won an Academy Award. Uh, deserving of it, I would say. And uh, put this here. Uh, so Anthony Hopkins is my 10th favorite actor. And again, these this list was actually... Uh, for some of them at the very top, I think, to, uh, was to a good extent fairly easy for me. And as I kept going, I'm like, you know, it's getting very hard. And um, I would love to really just uh, give so many, uh, have a bigger list. But, you know, I think 10 would be a good number to uh, stop at. And also uh, uh, some of those actors there, I would probably put in my in, in another uh, like 11 through 20 so uh, maybe not necessarily in the order I gave from getting to like the end but you know for like 10 people but you know I think a good number of them would probably be 11 through 20 for sure um my next up is Roy Scheider and my and his best performance for me is all that jazz now Jaws is my favorite film he has ever done, and I think, uh, yeah, no, I'm, de uh, I am uh, definitely sure uh, Chief Brody is my favorite performance, or favorite character he has given, but the best performance, no, I guess favorite and best aren't always the, doesn't have to uh, correlate, so, yeah, I think jo uh, Chief Brody would be my favorite performance from the, or favorite character, uh, in terms of like just rewatching over and over, but best performance, you know, there is a difference. Um, is in all all that jazz is Joe Gideon. He is amazing in this. I think he should have won the Academy Award. Uh, this really did show a good range that he had. You know, Jaws did show the police officer 
type role. He uh, had played in like films like The Seven Ups and The French Connection, of course. Um, but also very different. He's not. He doesn't seem to be as self confident in the sense that you know he's on a he has a fear of water. And he's trying to be a great chief in Jaws, but you know, it just so many factors where I play with the politicians and the media and uh, like the journalists and everything, especially with the shark attacks going on. There's so many things against him that he's trying to do his best, but you know, he's new, so he's not exactly able to do the utmost he would you know, love to do in other circumstances. But Joe Gideon, you know, he's a director. He's directing up, directing and choreographing a musical. Uh, he's directed a film that's being edited as the film, as we see in this film. And it's really fantastic just to see how, you know, he's trying to balance his life, professional life with his personal life, with his, especially with his daughter and also having affairs and such. But, this is a, phen a phenomenal performance. Um, uh, it's a real shame, I think, that Roy Scheider, as time went on, he kind of just didn't have the star power he got, he had back in the 70s. He had a bit here and there in the 80s, but, you know, by the 90s and then the 2000s, he, he didn't have the kind of star power he once did, unfortunately. Um, and that's a shame. But I guess that happens sometimes. Some people's star uh, dims. Um, so that was nine. So eight is uh, Tim Roth. And for me, uh, his performance as Mr. Orange in Reservoir Dogs is, uh, to me, again, his best performance. It's such a layered performance, you know, because of the kind of character he's playing, you know. Yeah, he's playing a criminal, helping out with the jewelry eyes. Now we find out he's a cop. But then he's also sort of, like, sort of befriends some of the guys, uh, particularly Mr. White, who's Harvey Keitel. And you can see he's very mixed, you know. He has a job to do as a cop, and he's doing his best to uphold that, uh, being, you know... Uh, you know, undercover, but at the same time, he's become friends with one of them, and so you can kind of see at times there's a bit of a, you know, you, you know, he's very much uh, hard to totally, uh, you know, he, he's not able to totally, uh, like, betray Mr. White, and also him. In the final moments of the film, he feels bad about what's happened and everything. It's just, just an incredible performance by Roth. Um, you know, p characters like uh, Mr. Blonde, Mr. Pink, and Mr. White obviously get talked about a lot, and, and for good reason. It's not for any you know, no reason. It's just uh, Tim Roth's performance is so uh, amazing. It's just fantastic, which makes it for me him. He's the best character in the film for me. Uh, really, just based off of the performance alone. I mean, the writing is also uh, top notch because Tarantino is excellent at writing uh, dialogue in particular. But really. Uh, Roth's performance is amazing. Um, and, and that's really it. That's, uh, but, you know, what more to say? Uh, yeah. Uh, great performance. And also, I know I didn't speak too much about Hannibal Lecter. But what can you say? That's Hannibal Lecter. Anthony Hopkins knocked it out of the park. And even in the sequels, uh, 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 the sequel, uh, uh, Hannibal and prequel Red Dragon, you know, I know a lot of people aren't fond of Hannibal, you know, Red Dragon was received better. 
neither uh, as beloved as the Silence of the Lambs. Um, but his performance was always uh, fantastic. You know, Anthony Hopkins is one of those actors who never phones it in. And I think you could say that for, like, all these people I'm uh, talking about, even if perhaps at some point they all <laughs> did it for money. Um, you know, uh, with these performances that I prefer from them, most definitely... Uh, they don't phone it in, uh, um, at least for me. Uh, and then seven would be uh, Alec Guinness in uh, Bridge on the River Kwai. Now, Star Wars would probably be, obviously, I think people will know, my favorite film he has ever uh, done, uh, as well as even perhaps the favorite character he's played. But this is his best performance. Um, he won an Academy Award for this. Very deserved as a colonel who... Doing his best to be dignified and still... You know, show what the British can do. Even when it seems like there's no point. You know, he, he he's doing his diligence and doing the best with what he... Doing the best he can with what he's got. And by the end of the film, he realizes what he has done, and it's just too late to undo things. Because <clears throat> in a moment where he's kind of like, yeah, I, that was not the greatest thing uh, uh, to have done. But fantastic performance, excellent film. Yeah, not much more can be said, really. I, uh... I just love this film. It's excellent. And, and the performance by Guinness, too. It's just a very layered and he's a very complex character, honestly. And I don't know how many people would have been able to play uh, play the character as well as Guinness, really. I can't think of anybody but him in this film. Uh, number six... Uh, Robert De Niro in his best performance to me is as Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver. Vietnam vet, uh, particularly in the Marines, who comes back, who is in, yeah, he comes back and he's in, uh, now at this point in uh, New York. You know, he's suffering from PTSD, but he's unable to really uh, get any help, uh, especially in those days, and in particular, I guess, in New York. Just that kind of guy in that kind of environment. He's not really going to get the help he needs. And so, you know, he's not able to really sleep. So he's uh, driving a taxi all night long. And, you know, he's, as film goes on, you know, he's like, he's got bad ideas. Yeah, some bad ideas going on in his head. And uh, by the end of the film, we see him uh, basically uh, go... Uh, forward with some of the bad ideas though his first plan doesn't really go uh as he planned you know his first plan didn't go as he hoped or thought it would so he has to go to another plan and uh yeah you know there's a lot of people who are like Travis Bickle you all come back for more and there's not much for them you know whatever help that might be out there though this, these days it seems like there's better help though I'm, I'm sure some veterans would even say that could be debatable too i guess depending on where they live and everything but uh, it seems like th it has been a bit better since the 70s but yeah they uh there are people who are like this who have bad ideas trying to do the best but they're just not completely able to connect with people and they want to and so you know, there's they're in turmoil essentially, and it's a it's very unfortunate. Um, great performance. I think he should have won the Academy Award for this. Um, it's a shame he didn't. Um, but he was nominated, so I guess there's that. Um, uh, my fifth favorite actor uh, is Al Pacino and. 
The Godfather is my favorite uh, performance he's given. Um, I guess the whole trilogy as a whole probably could be summarized. I know there's people who aren't fond of three, and that's fine. Everybody has their own opinion. But for me, <clears throat> he really uh, does an amazing job in this film, uh, in all these films. Um, nominated twice, once for supporting actor, which was nonsense since he was the clear lead in the first film. I mean, Marlon Brando, really, when you look at it, he was only in the film for, a, he was only in a third of the film. But I guess it could be like Anthony Hopkins, who had very limited screen time, yet just seems to dominate the whole film. And you feel like he's in more of it than he really is. Um, but uh, Pacino's performance is just amazing. Um, you know, sometimes uh, words aren't enough. And I think to an extent, you know, that, that is very true for Michael Corleone. You know, he starts off as a good man who doesn't want to really have anything to do with the business that his family is in, but is thrust into that uh, once his father is, you know, uh, uh, injured after being shot. And he... Uh, uh, begins to take some responsibilities that, you know, his father never wanted for him. And uh, we see the course of that film. And then, of course, two and three, uh, you know, just, just kind of continue from there. It just, it just, it just grows. And he it becomes the godfather. You mean, yeah, like the pass, the torch is passed to him and it's, it's amazing. His performance in these films are is just uh, uh, amazing. You know, not much more you can really say, really. Um, but yeah, The Godfather is amazing. Not much more to say. And Pacino is phenomenal. Should have won at least one Academy Award for his work here, but uh, he won. Uh, 20 years later for Scent of a Woman, because, you know, can't give it to him for supporting actor and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, um, which was, that was a better performance that year, but that would have been supporting, and, you know, and he's a leading man, can't just have him be supporting actor, um, which is kind of interesting considering uh, a later uh, person I will uh, mention, uh, but my fourth favorite actor is uh, Peter Sellers in Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb is my is, is, uh, those three characters uh, you know the American President uh, Merkin Muffley uh, Air Force Captain Lionel Mandrick as well as Dr. Strange Love he is fantastic he really showcases his talent his comedic abilities, his ability to pretty much begin to uh, say the first lines and then just go off on whatever it, it comes to his mind. And that kind of works and flows so that way if he stopped and it's someone else's turn to uh, reply to him, he's, he's, he's just great. Um, yeah, it's not much more you can really say. It's hilarious. He should have won the Academy Award, but I went to Rex Harris, uh, Harrison for My Fair Lady. Yeah. Oh, well. But, you know, he, uh, he did a great job. He got his first Academy Award nomination, but for, well, for Best Actor. He was nominated for a short film some years prior, but, yeah. His first acting Academy Award nomination. He didn't get the, for this, which I would say is his best. Again, he showed his acting abilities, and that was 
truly amazing in this uh, his comedic abilities. He was just, I don't know, words sometimes just aren't enough. It's like you just got to see it to believe it. And uh, Peter Sellers is definitely worth watching, uh, especially in this. If you ever wanted to just see how talented he is just for one movie only, him playing three characters, and by the end of the film, he is interacting with himself, basically, as, as the president and Dr. Strangelove, and that's just amazing and hilarious. And I think also he kind of plays the most sane character uh, as uh, Group Captain Lionel Mandrake. So, yeah. Now my top three. Um... My third favorite actor is Peter O'Toole and uh, Lawrence of Arabia. I think he gave his best performance, and I've talked about this film quite a bit before. He should have won the Academy Award for this for sure, in my opinion. And I believe I've mentioned how I think this is the greatest per uh, performance on film ever in my opinion. So, in a way, this is the greatest performance I have seen on film. He is not my favorite actor, but he gave the best performance. You know, the character of, or the, or the person of, uh, that was T.E. Lawrence, from accounts from people who knew him, like, worked with him, as well as his own brothers. Like, you know, they knew him, but at the same time, they didn't know him. Like, there was just something about him that was just mysterious. Like, you could know him for many years, you know, grow up with him, you know, or work with him for years, you know, in the military. And yet, at the end of the day, it's like, when you look back at him, they're like, yeah, they, they don't totally know what all to say. And uh, Peter O'Toole really brings that to this, to his performance. May not be, might not have been totally, uh, <clears throat> done on purpose by him but he achieved that and i think that's something that is, is amazing and i don't think many people would have been able to do so and again if he if one did think of it it might not have been as great you know it's just one of those performances that is amazing and uh just the what he had to work with and the director you know the script and Direction was top notch, and his performance truly benefited from that. You know, he was somebody who I think did as well. I know De Niro and Pacino have done films that obviously not people really enjoy, um, and no doubt some of those were uh, for paychecks. But at the same time, some of those performances, I think, uh, where they did do paychecks, you know, they seemed to really live it up and have fun with it. So. I don't know if in some of their performances they were uh, full on, you know. I don't. I think they were committed. It's just their their roles were just so out there. They just went for it. And I think he, Peter O'Toole is somebody who. Well, I don't think he necessarily did too many movies like for a paycheck. You know, he did some stuff that you know. Maybe not pe many people would enjoy or love, but he really, you know, he put his all into it. You know, he's one of those classically, like, trained actors who did stage and everything, then did film, and did an amazing job. Uh, and uh, this is like his debut, basically, <laughs> to a whole world. And what a debut to make, you know, that this is a like a four-hour epic of pretty much... Um, yeah, 227 minutes, so almost four hours, over three and a half for sure, so yeah, <laughs> about a three and a half plus power epic, and uh, all really thanks to the uh, the leading performance is what really helps this film. Uh, I mean, everybody else in this is excellent too, Omar Sharif, Alec Guinness also is in this film, and Anthony Quayle, Claude Rains, Jack Hawkins, Jose Ferrer, Arthur Kennedy, you know, it's just, just an amazing performance. Uh, 
I can't say enough great things about it. Now, number two, I could see some people saying I'm cheating because I have a tie. But you know what I thought about it? I'm like, yeah, this is my, my list and I can tie people if I want. Um, so the first person I will mention is Ewan McGregor. He's tying for second place. Um, the Star Wars prequels. I think he has gave his best performance. You know, because he had a lot to live up to. You know, he had to be a young Alec Guinness. And he also had to do it in such a way where he wasn't, you know, copying Alec Guinness. Like, like purposely. You know, I mean, his accent had to sound like a young Alec Guinness. And he watched a bunch of films of Alec Guinness young for Phantom Menace. And then he got... Uh, and he sort of did that more like he kept watching movies and then for Revenge of the Sith they uh, compiled every single uh, scene he ever did in like a, a New Hope and maybe for the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi a couple of scenes he was in but I think primarily a New Hope that way he could totally you know get into the more certain inflections like even closer to Alec Guinness is Obi Wan. That way, when you watch these in order from one to th uh, six, you'll be able to, you know, the the performances of Obi Wan is pretty. You know, it is actually very smooth. There is no real jarring notion like well, that guy isn't convincing at all. That's yeah, just no. That's just bad. None of that uh, happens with Ewan McGregor, and he was a he's always been a great actor. Um. To some extent, he's uh, fairly underrated, kind of like uh, Tim Roth, I think, to some extent. Even though, I guess you could say, you know, he is an A-lister for sure. Um, but at the same time, it's like the kind of, you know, he doesn't get as much of a, as much hype as perhaps some of these others I have mentioned. You know, like his profile, he's like, he is an A-lister. And yet at the same time, to, there's something about him that is sort of underrated, if that makes sense. I can't really describe it, but his performance as Obi-Wan, you know, he really did an amazing job. You know, I know Train Spotting for a lot of people will probably be number one. I love that film uh, and his performance. Um, Moulin Rouge, he was really good in also. But, you know, obviously I am biased towards the Star Wars franchise. The original is my favorite film of all time. And I love the uh, the rest of the original trilogy as well as the I do enjoy the prequels. I know people have, you know, there are detractors to the prequels, but if there's anything, even people who aren't fond of the prequels can say, like, you know, Ewan McGregor was excellent. That's At least that's something that is uh, a consensus of, like, even people who aren't fond of the prequels and people who love the prequels can agree on at least one thing. It's Ewan McGregor's performance is great. And I think his performance is better than Alec Guinness. Of course, he was really primarily in the original film, and then he was in the uh, uh, sequels that followed, but, you know, he was a forest ghost, so... And he was only in a few scenes in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So, you know... It's just one of those films where, you know, I love it. It, I, it's a film where, you know, all of these films are excellent and the performances really help. You know, it might be melodramatic at times and the acting is theatrical, but that's on purpose. You know, it's a space opera. And Ewan McGregor uh, did an excellent job. You know, he never took it too far. He was perfect, you know, from the young Obi-Wan to the older and wise Jedi Master that then we see Alec Guinness playing for. Great performance by him. Um, and, of course, I just love these films. So the person who <clears throat> uh, ties with Hugh McGregor in second place is Christian Bale. And for me, the Dark Knight trilogy is, <clears throat> well, it's my favorite. That's his best performance for me. I know a lot of people will say American Psycho. 
and I definitely see and understand why. But in these, this trilogy, he really, and I, I believe I've mentioned this before when I talked about these films, but he really goes all out and really seems to uh, embody the character of Bruce Wayne and Batman, you know. He's able to get the playboy side of Bruce Wayne where, you know, people see him sort of as kind of like this jerk who's really, who obviously is very rich and he's good at business because clearly he's able to sustain his <coughs> wealth. Um, though I'm sure by the Dark Knight Rises, some might question that because of just how things have gone. Though to some extent, you know, it's like when you watch the film and you know what happens you can see what all you can understand what happened but you know you know he's basically a good businessman but seen as a jerk to the public you know and as batman you know he channels his anger and pain uh, from witnessing his parents killed in front of him and puts that into being batman and, and he's got that voice <laughs> I know that's not exactly the voice he had, but, you know, eh, close enough, and I can get closer, but sometimes that uh, hurts my throat. And I don't want to totally hurt my throat, because I'm not even at number one yet, but Christian Bale, you know, he, he, he got Batman, right? I know people give him a lot of trash for the voice, but I, I, I think I've said this before, it was not his fault for the sequels. You know, people like his voice in Batman Begins. Like, you should have just kept it that way. Uh, he did. Uh, it's just, you know, he, Nolan wanted, Christopher Nolan wanted, uh, and the Dark Knight and, and the Dark Knight Rises, wanted him to sound even darker and gruffer. Like, you know, as he keeps going as Batman, his voice just gets even darker. Um, but, you know, Christian Bale wasn't able to do that without, like, losing his voice. And apparently he actually did for the first, like, day or two when he was Batman and he used that voice for Batman Begins so with that in mind he probably was like I I, I can't do that without you know uh, losing my voice which then would be like well we, we can't uh, work for me for like a day or two so you'd have to find something else to shoot you know, put something else in the schedule that way I can rest my voice and then uh, we can go from there so and the sequels uh they put an effect on his voice to sound darker that way nolan was happy and also christian bale doesn't uh break his voice um and then there is the real bruce wayne that uh characters like alfred and lucius fox rachel um <clears throat> and then by the end of the trilogy uh john blake and selena kyle see who you know he's a very kind man he's a very smart man he's not aloof he isn't selfish you know him being batman at night i think would probably indicate he's not a full-on selfish person you know rich guy going out and beating up criminals and putting fear into them to hopefully if it, you know if they get out of like if they commit enough you know crimes that isn't gonna uh, put them away for life you know they might be able to reform and not want to have to meet batman again and uh yeah just all these reasons all these sides that he was able to nail you know he really got batman and he made a character that for the most part people probably wouldn't look too deep into and he was able to really uh, make him a fully fledged out uh, character um more so than before of course you know that uh, People like, you know, Michael Keaton and Val Kilmer did a really uh, good job with the material they had, as well as the direction that they were given. George Clooney, well, we don't need to talk about that. And I think Ben Affleck did a fine job. He just didn't have the greatest material to work with. Um, Robert Pattinson did fine. It's just as Bruce Wayne was pretty much Batman the whole time. Saw a little bit of genuine Bruce. Uh, this few scenes with Alfred, but not enough for me. And Adam West's Batman, Bruce Wayne, was just, well, that just speaks for itself. You know, that's just top-notch, honestly. Uh, uh, Adam West was, uh, he's Adam West. He was the man. 
<clears throat> I think that's all you really need to say about him. But Christian Bale really is Batman for me. He's Bruce Wayne. He just got it. He just got the character, in my opinion. But that's me. Uh, and so, my favorite actor of all time is Gary Oldman and his performance in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which I believe I have talked about already. If not, I might have to remedy that. I'm pretty sure I did, but I love this performance. I love this film. I know there are people who aren't fond of this film, and I think uh, in part for some, they saw the miniseries before, and so obviously they got like, you know, uh, uh, like more than just two hours of this book uh, that was adapted, you know, for television like in the, uh, I believe, late 70s, early 80s, played by Alec Guinness. And so he, you know, you know, for that, you know, there, that ad adaptation already existed. And so for him to play this character was really amazing. You know, I mean, you know, that was also a task for him, but he really uh, gave it his all. He is totally convincing. And I have seen the miniseries before because it played around the time this was out, and so I saw it. I enjoyed it. But there's just something about this I like. In a way, yeah, there is quite a bit missing. But I think they got all the important stuff needed for a feature-length film. And they do have some deleted scenes. And I don't know um, if they have even more deleted scenes Um that perhaps just never made it onto the Blu-ray disc. I don't know why they wouldn't, but you never know. Sometimes there's some stuff that maybe the director's like, you know, nobody needs to actually see that. Some of these scenes, sure, fine. Um, I know some people aren't fond of the pacing and how slow it is, but I think it's worth it. I think the slow pacing is definitely great, and it is something that is totally uh, good. It is, it's just very... Uh, uh, it's needed i think that's just what i can uh safely say it's just it's uh, it's appropriate for the story and the lead performance by uh gary oldman as george smiley is just uh amazing he is impeccable he is an amazing actor all the way around and picking his best performance is not that easy i mean I think with my praise of the Dark Knight trilogy, I think we can safely say this is, these are my favorite films he has ever done. Uh, but for best performance, it's Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. He is very quiet, and Gary Oldman is known for being very loud. Um, and appropriately so. All of, you know, the kind of characters he plays that are loud. You know, he's loud when he needs to be. And, and as Commissioner Gordon, you know, there are moments where he is yelling, but it's appropriate. And there are moments where that are quiet. For the most part, he is pretty much quiet throughout this film. There's like a, like a moment or two where he's really, you know, uh, fairly loud. But, you know, again, it's appropriate. It isn't mu too much. It's, it's, it's a performance that is truly uh, amazing. And with a supporting cast of Colin Firth, uh, Tom Hardy, John Hurt, Toby Jones, Mark Strong, and Benedict Cumberbatch. And a, an amazing uh, script, great direction. And a yeah, great lead of Oldman. Uh, this hits it out of the park for me. Um, I love this film. I think it's amazing. Um... I think he deserved the Academy Award for Best Actor. Um, this was his first Oscar nomination of his whole career, which I think is flat out sad uh, on the Academy's part. I mean, I can understand for some, like, I don't know, maybe some of the performances he gave, you know, might be like for like Lee Harvey Oswald and JFK. 
maybe it was seen as too short. But then again, like, you know, there's performances that are even shorter that have been nominated in or won uh, an Academy Award. So I don't know how uh, how much that uh, kind of argument actually has much uh, has any legs really to stand on. But you know, Sid Vicious and, and Sid and Nancy, uh, Immortal Beloved as Beethoven, uh, the professional. Or he's a corrupt cop. Yeah, uh, the contender. He's a senator. Played in, uh... Those are all films he should have been nominated for, at least, uh, prior to Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. He probably should have at least won uh, a couple by that point. Uh, at least one or two. You know, maybe this is, his, you know, third or fourth. I don't know. And he won for Darkest Hour, deservingly so. And then he got nominated again for Mank. Uh, excellent performance in that film, just like Tink, uh, Darkest Hour. Um, but this is uh, his best performance for me. I know that will be different for everybody else, but... Yeah, I just wanted to spend time just talking about actors I really like. Uh, again, maybe in a hundred episodes or so, I will talk about my favorite actresses. Um, I know, like, like for actors, I know who my top, like, three or five uh, actors are uh, pretty well. Same with actresses. I could think of the first uh, three I would put at the top, but uh, maybe even five. But after that, I really have to think and look. Uh, who I really love in, in terms of their work that would rank above others. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult at times, but uh, also sometimes for uh, visual aids, you know, I like to have uh, movies and for some of the actresses, I don't have uh, uh, what I would consider their best work. And part of that is intentional because sometimes their best work is just, heartbreaking or something and it's just like oh and it's like I, i've like seen it once and that's just uh, you know that's enough like i've seen it excellent performance oh what an award well they deserve to and then you know that's it uh uh tr truly uh i like to do this again for uh, next time for women that'd be pretty cool i think um but yeah, I had been thinking about this kind of thing with the next big milestone for this series. So if you have if you have stayed this long, thank you. Uh, I can understand if you didn't, because yeah, this is about a fifty-minute video or so. Um, might edit a few parts for you know because of a, certain noises or whatever occurred, but. Yeah, it's about 50 minutes uh, uh, to round about. But, yeah, I hope uh, this was interesting. And I hope I didn't ramble on way too much. But if so, apologies. <clears throat> At least I didn't go on a big rant <laughs> like last uh, last week. I think we could all be happy for that. But anyway, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you're all having a... You've had a great week, and I hope your weekend will be excellent. And that you'll have a great week also. So until next time, please take care.